Presiding officer, um, the airwaves were buzzing last week with the news that Scotland will finally have a daily BBC channel from August next year. But I wonder, would the father of television, John Logie Baird, be rejoicing that 90 years on from his invention, we are where we are? Of course, the new channel is a step in the right direction and it's long overdue. And our cabinet secretary should be applauded for all her work in helping it come to fruition. Um, I, as a former journalist, I welcome the fact that it will create 80 new posts for an hour-long news and current affairs programme with editorial co control over content. And I agree with Lewis MacDonald's comments uh, on this issue. It will also be a chance to showcase Scotland's amazing array of national talent in the arts and the media and encourage future generations to contribute to our rich culture. However, presiding officer, Scotland's new channel has been funded to the tune of 30 million, which falls well short of the proportionate share being spent in Northern Ireland and Wales. Last year, 55% of licence fee funds were spent on Scottish network content. By stark comparison, 95% of licence fee funds raised in Wales were spent in Wales, with the figure for Northern Ireland being 74%. Yes. Rachel Rana, Hamill. Would Rona Mackay agree with me that um, including the investment, the new investment and the distribution um, costs, that this will rise to up to 80%? Rona Mackay. Uh, I, I, can't, I, I haven't figured that out, but all I can say is, would you welcome this channel being run on a shoestring? Because I don't think that's what we want. Um, by stark comparison, 95% of licence fee funds raised in Wales were spent in Wales, with a figure for Northern Ireland being 74%. The Scottish Broadcasting Commission estimated in 2009 that a new channel would cost around £75 million. You do the maths. It's also worth noting that in Catalonia... It's also worth noting that in Catalonia, with a population just larger than Scotland, the public broadcaster's annual budget is £293 million. It broadcasts six TV channels and four radio stations. Remember that the BBC raises £320 million from licence fees in Scotland. So come to your own conclusion. Evidently, we have some way to go, but I do hope this is the start of a flourishing broadcasting future in Scotland. And we should all wish it well. On the wider issue of Scotland's rich and incredible culture, to outline it in a four-minute speech is not easy. Inventors who changed the world, such as doctors, scientists and engineers, actors, composers, film producers, comedians, musicians, and all the rest. But, presiding officer, I look back in anger when I think about what has been done to our Scottish culture over the decades. The lack of Scottish history taught during my time at school still saddens me. I learned more about the Battle of Hastings and Oliver Cromwell than I did about the Battle of Bannockburn or the Highland Clearances. Then there were the generations of children who were belted for not speaking the Queen's English. Can you imagine children being denied the right to speak in their mother tongue because it was too Scottish? Thankfully, that's all changing and our beautiful Scots language, including Gaelic, is back on the school curriculum. However, the commitment of 1.2 million Investment in BBC Alba, as my colleague Angus MacDonald outlined in portfolio questions earlier, um, falls short of the 10 hour per week commitment the channel needs to ensure it can build on its success. To conclude on an optimistic note, however, I'm delighted that the Scottish Government is investing in Ward Park Film Studios in Cumbernauld, home to the fantastic Outlander and soon to produce the new Avengers film Infinity. Presiding officer, the reawakening of our culture has been hard fought, but I'm glad that we're last making some progress with this new, v new TV channel. The nation of Scotland has contributed so much to the world culturally, and it has so much more to give. Neil Finlay to be